to ask you to turn to Romans uh, chapter 12. You know, we've been in there for several weeks, and you can never exhaust the Word of God. You can never exhaust the Word of God. God can camp you on one verse for days and months and years, and you will never squeeze out everything, every bit of life that's in there, because the, the Word is alive. The word is alive. So, so we're going to look at Romans 12, 1 and 2 again this morning. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and read it in the King James to begin with. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing, excuse me, of your mind. That you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You know, these two verses go together. Amen. They're the same thought, one thought. The, the translators separated the letters that we've received from the apostles. This letter being written by Paul. The translators have broken them down into chapter and verse for easy reference. Yeah. But you know when Paul sent this letter to the Romans, the Christians, Christians in Rome, he didn't separate them by verses. So this is one thought. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And, so there's the conjoining word, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Now, I wasn't going to review at all, but this morning the Lord prompted me again to, re to, re to reference what I brought out yesterday, or last week, Pastor Todd on the butterfly, and the transformation from the caterpillar to the butterfly, and that death occurs. The caterpillar literally dies, and the cells of the caterpillar dissolve, right? And I read the question from the little uh, fifth grader. The fifth grader says, uh, is a butterfly's brain the same as the one it had when it was a caterpillar? That was the question. And the instructor says, that's a great question. Actually, most of the parts, tissue that we, what we would call the brain in a caterpillar is broken down during metamorphosis and rebuilt in the adult butterfly. Remember, we said most. The muscles are broken down and rebuilt. This makes sense because of what you have probably observed. Caterpillars crawl, butterflies fly. They need different types of muscles for the different ways they move. What is especially interesting is that the brain cells that aren't completely broken down are mostly the ones that send signals to the muscles to help them move. Isn't that cool? But now notice... We're talking about a caterpillar who was willing to die. A caterpillar whose very act of, of spinning a cocoon meant death for him. Because death means transformation. Death means transformation. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. These two verses go together. That means that presenting your bodies is the process for transformation. Present our bodies 
a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Service there is worship. So it's your reasonable worship to present your bodies. Who are we presenting our bodies to? Ultimately, God. But here on this plane, one another. And I'll show you. Why? Because it's our reasonable worship, according to the word of God. And it says, holy, acceptable, holy, acceptable. Holy means sacred, pure, and consecrated. I beseech you, that, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, sacred, pure, consecrated, acceptable. Acceptable means fully agreeable, not kicking and screaming the whole way. If you've ever heard Brother Hagin teach at any length of time, you probably hear him tell the testimony of the, he was asking the Lord what was wrong. He wasn't seeing things happen in his life. And he said, I told you if you were willing and obedient, you'd eat the good of the land. And Brother Hagin says, Lord, you know, you know I've been obedient. He said, yep, but you haven't been willing. And that's what we're talking about. Uh, fully agreeable to him. Fully agreeable. That's what acceptable means. Holy, acceptable. Present your body as a living sacrifice, and then it's defined. Holy, acceptable unto God, meaning fully agree agreeable, which is your reasonable service. So the word I want to highlight right now is present. Present. Now, if you'll remember last week, we talked about uh, Abraham considered not. Right? We're going to look at, I believe we're going to get the time to look at Abraham again today. But Present means to place beside or near. Present. To place beside or near. To provide. To place at one's disposal. To stand beside. To stand ready. To help. That's what present means. Present. Now, notice it says, in light of the mercies of God, present. Present. In light of the mercies of God, present. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. In light of. By the mercies means in light of. Considering the mercy of God, I beseech you, is how he's saying it. So I'm saying in light of. With that uh, light, the, the mercy of God overarching your life. In light of the mercy of God. In light of the mercy he bestowed upon you. Present your body, which is your reasonable worship. In light of that, in light of God's mercy, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Now, I'm, I want to talk a little bit about the word sacrifice. I know most of us have an image when we see sacrifice, and as I mentioned, the caterpillar was willing to die. And when we think of Abraham, we think of the sacrifice that he was willing to make. He made many, and one that comes to our mind is the sacrifice of his son. Um, but sacrifice has, in, in the Hebrew day, and now in the church day, sacrifice has a, a, another more profound meaning. And I, I'm going to share, I'm going to share what that is, but I wanted to tell you a, a story to, to highlight what that is. My my husband, uh, when we were first dating, he he was a gift giver. He still is a gift giver, and I like gifts, so that works out really well. <laughs> and so he was always bringing gifts. And the first the first one that really knocked my socks off was at our first Christmas together. He gave me a diamond necklace, and it was stunning beautiful. And I was overwhelmed by that diamond necklace. Now, um, we grew in love with each other and still are growing in love with each other. And we still want to get closer to each other. So years later, I'm not even sure how many years later, I believe we were living in Texas. Yes, because I went to Gun Barrel City to do this. We were living in Texas, so this is years later. 
I wanted to give him a gift because I wanted him to know how much I loved him. I wanted to get even closer to him than I had been in the past. And it was just burning in me how I wanted him to know. So I took that diamond necklace and I went to a jeweler. And I asked if they would take that diamond and put it in his wedding band because his wedding band had lost a stone. That's what sacrifice means. It's the word korban in the Hebrew. And it means you're willing to give something of value to demonstrate your love for another. That's what true sacrifice is. It isn't to appease the wrath of an angry God. My gift to him wasn't to appease the wrath of an angry husband. It was to say, I love you back. I love you more than you know. That's what that was. That's what sacrifice is. So when we read, present your bodies a living sacrifice, it's your heart that you're saying, I'm giving you my body to do with what you will because I love you. It's not, I'm giving you my body, which is my reasonable service because it's the least I can do to keep you from being mad at me. Amen. That's not what it is. Amen. Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable worship. And don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. That presenting of your body is what transforms us. Now, I want to read in Isaiah, or excuse me, not Isaiah, stay in Romans. We're going to read it in Romans, but there's a, there's a favorite translation a few of us have up in this house, and that is the International Standard Version. Not everyone has it, and I don't think we have it on the screen yet, so you don't need to put it up, because I'm just going to go ahead, excuse me, go ahead and read it. Roger, I know you have it, so you'll be reading right along with us, and anyone else, International Standard Version. So this is how it says. Now, Hear it as a letter written from Paul to you personally, as the church, the body of Christ. I therefore urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercies, offer your bodies as living sacrifices that are holy and pleasing to God. Your body is holy and pleasing to God. Your body is sacred to God. For this is the reasonable way for you to worship. Don't be conformed to this world, but continuously be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may be able to determine what God's will is, what is proper, pleasing, and perfect. See, as you present your body and you're transformed, then you're able to discern what God's will is in your life. Every step. I just don't know what God wants me to do. Well, you haven't presented your body, perhaps. Present your body, be transformed, and you will be able to know what the will of God is for your life. Every step. And some of you can testify to that. It wasn't until you started presenting your body that you got connected to the body that you all of a sudden start going, wow, I never saw that for my life, but now I, got, and now I see what God wants me to do. Yeah. And it's getting clearer and clearer and clearer yeah. every day. Woo! That's good. <sighs> for by the grace given to me, I ask every one of you, not to think of yourself more highly than you should think. Remember, Paul's writing this letter. Two verses go together with the third and the fourth and the fifth and all the verses that come after, all the verses that came before, right? So we're reading the letter. Can't just pick out our favorite verses and go, yeah! <laughs> no. <laughs> Got to look at the whole letter. So we're presenting our bodies, not being conformed. It's the proper pleasing thing to do, Right? For by the grace given to me, I ask every one of you not to think of yourself more highly than you should think. Rather, think of yourself with sober judgment on the measure of faith that God has assigned each of you. For we have many parts in one body, but these parts do not all have the same function. In the same way, even though we are many people, we are one body in Messiah. And individual parts connected to each other. 
individual parts connected to each other. We have different gifts based on the grace that was given to us. So if your gift is prophecy, use your gift in proportion to your faith. If your gift is serving, devote yourself to serving others. If it's teaching, devote yourself to teaching others. If it's encouraging, devote yourself to encouraging others. If it's sharing, share generously. If it's leading, lead enthusiastically. If it's helping, help cheerfully. Not, all right, I'll help. No, cheerfully, yes. It's my privilege. It's my pleasure. I'm happy to help. Your love must be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to each other with mutual affection. Excel at showing respect to each other. Excel at showing respect to each other. Never be lazy in showing such devotion. Be on fire with the Spirit. Serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. Whoo! That goes with Romans 12, 1 and 2. Present your bodies. What do you present your bodies to? The church. One another. Each other. We sing the song, my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself away. And that's easy when we say it to Jesus. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself. And then Jesus comes along, taps you on the shoulder and go, hey, I want you to work in children's church. And you're like, ah, uh, talk to the hand. <laughs> Been there, done that. Served my time. I'm not doing that anymore. Really? Present your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy and stuff. Lord, I'll do that because you gave me the gift to do that. See, it's presenting that gift. He gave me the diamond. I take the diamond. The diamond was his to begin with. He gives it to me, and I give it back to him. So the gift that God has given us, the gift of serving, the gift of teaching, the gift of worship, the gift of all the gifts that God has given us, he's given to us, and we give them back to him. Yeah. <laughs> because we love him. Because we love him. Yeah. He's worthy, and we love him. Amen. You give it to me, I give it back to you. Right? Yeah. That's what present your bodies is, and that's what transformed you. Do you know that, and I've said this before, I believe, maybe not in this context. When I first met my husband, I had had a lot of jobs. I was a young woman, and I had had already, well... Three jobs by the time I met him. I'm only 24 years old, and I've had three jobs already, and that really bugged him. Because he'd only had one, two jobs. Yeah. So then when we get married, I'm still struggling to find the right job, and it's not working, and I'm leaving the job, and I'm not, I'm not getting it. Because it was about me. It was all about me. It's all about me. It's all about me. It wasn't until he got saved and we connected to a church back in 1991. Back in 1991, we connect to a church. And all of a sudden, there's this stick to that came up in me. Like, I'm going to do this thing. And I'm not going to quit doing this thing. That's what it's all about. The body of Christ is for our development. The body of Christ is for our development so we can make a difference outside of. I mean, it's the best training ground you will ever step your foot into. Ever. Ever. Because things don't go your way in a church. Say it ain't so. <laughs> they don't sing the songs you like in a church. Well, maybe they do sometimes. But boy, I sure wish they'd sing that other song. I really like that other song. They haven't sang that since they started it the first. Bah, 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 bah. You know what I'm saying? 
you know, and I really don't, I really don't like when so-and-so does such and such. I don't want to meddle. If your gift is serving, devote yourself to serving others. If it's teaching, devote yourself to teaching. If it's encouraging, devote yourself to encouraging. If it's sharing, share generously. If it's leading, lead enthusiastically. If it's helping, help cheerfully. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. So you present your bodies because your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> the Bible says that. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. When we come to Jesus, when we come and accept that he is master, that's what Lord means, master, that's how, that's how our spirits are transformed, right? Because we bow our knee to Jesus. We say, we say uh, Lord, I believe that you died for me. You went to hell. You rose from the grave. You live forevermore. And I, I believe you are Lord. You are the Son of God. You are Messiah, the anointed one, his anointing. You believe that. You confess that with your mouth. You are made new on the inside. Right? You're made new on the inside. That's... That's a transformation that happens. But this transformation that we're talking about is our soul arena. The part of me that didn't let me, didn't want me to keep the job because the boss was mean or the coworker was mean or they weren't paying me enough or I wasn't going my way or whatever. You know, fill in the blanks. Because transformation hadn't happened to my soul. But when I got involved with the church and when I said, here I am, I'm here to serve, I'll, and, and, and my husband led me in this because he said he made the decision never to say no to God. And, and the way that translated, see, we're good to say, yes, God, I'll never say no to you. But the way that translated for him was when Pastor Dwayne called him on the phone and said, Pastor, uh, hey, Steve, um, I need your help on Wednesday. I need you to lead prayer. See, that's how saying no to God translated. He could have, uh, no, Pastor Dwayne, I'm not going to do that. But wait a minute. He'd already said, I'll never say no to God. Am I saying Pastor Steve's God? No, but he is the representative of God that he's having fellowship with. Bart calls me up, another member of the church, wants me to serve on Saturday morning cleaning the church my husband said we don't say no to god is bart god in this instance yes he is because he's a representative of god's body so i don't say no i say yes a couple years into it we're serving on we're serving we were asked to do the youth we did the youth we were asked to do other things we did the other things one morning, 5.30 in the morning, we're here. For, we're there for prayer because pastor says we're calling prayer. So we're there for prayer. We don't say no to God. So we're there for God because they're the representative for us on the earth for, as God. They're the representative of God on the earth for us. So they call for prayer. So we're there, 5.30 in the morning. And I'm at the back row going back and forth, back and forth. Debbie's up on the keyboard playing. And I stop and I start playing on the back of the, of the chair. I start playing with my fingers. And the Lord says, I want you to do that. I said, no. <laughs> I'm not doing that. He said, I thought you'd do anything for me. I said, yes, sir. I'll do it. I've been doing it ever since. I'm not something special. That's not what this is about. I'm not tooting my own horn. I'm just telling you how I learned to present my body a living sacrifice. It was my love for Jesus. It wasn't my approval, uh, my need for approval of, from man. It was my love for Jesus. I was like, well, if he believes he gave me the gift to play on the piano, who am I to say no to that? If he believes I'm gifted to teach children, who am I to say no to that? Because it's about presenting what he's given me. You see? 
present what he's given you, the talents, the gifts that he's put in us. Romans is an excellent example. That letter lists it, all the different gifts in the body for our benefit. Jesus said he would build his church on the revelation that he's the Messiah. He would build his church, uh, his body, on the revelation, on the light, on the knowing that he's the anointed one. And that, that's his plan. And his plan was, there was a purpose for that. That was to display to the world, there is a God. And he's in the church. Because they do what Romans says do. They love one another. They're, they're respectful of one another. And see, that doesn't come easy. Because we have souls. Unrenewed souls, but we're getting our souls renewed by working with other people. Yeah. I remember um, right before we came here, we were, we were serving at a church because God had moved us, as you know, from Minnesota to Texas, and, and transition is happening, and he's getting us ready, and we're following the path, <clears throat> and um, we're serving at a church, and we got called to go to Michigan for a special conference. And we could have said no, but we didn't because we don't say no. We don't say no. Why? Because they're the representation of God to us on the earth. Yes, we have the word of God. Now, if they had asked us to do something contrary to the word of God... We would have said no. Right. But it's in line with the word of God. Romans. Help if you can help. Help cheerfully if you can help cheerfully. Right? Help if you can help. If you've been gifted to help, help cheerfully. So there it is. Not contrary to the word. He asks us, can you go to, will you go to Michigan and help? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we go. And I'm put in this environment with a whole bunch of group of people that are very gifted and talented in worship music, praise music, music in general, trained. I'm talking top-notch trained. I'm not. Thank God they didn't ask me to play the keys. <laughs> but they just asked me to bring my voice. Bring my voice. And sing songs I don't know. No, I'm for real. I got a list before I left. The last day before I left, I got a list. I got a list of the songs we're going to sing, and I'm going through the list. I go, oh, some of these I know, some I know. Okay, all oh, those couple I don't know. So I'm listening to them the night before. I'm listening. We get there in the morning. Oh, and then we're texted what we're going to wear. Color coordinated, sort of, so to speak. And we had to run to the store because I needed something. And uh, so we get there in the morning, we line up, you know, and we go down in the choir room and everybody lines up and they put the song list on the board. None of them were on the list I got. <laughs> Not one. I didn't know any of them. And we're going on in 15 minutes. Now, I could have gone, you know what, Pfft, forget this. Which 30 years earlier, I probably would have. Forget this. But see, I had already grown to a certain degree. My mind had already been renewed to a certain degree. I had had always been, I had already been transformed to a certain degree. So I didn't have the forget this attitude. I had the yes, sir, okay. You called me to do it. You knew ahead of time. I'm just gonna do it. Yeah. So now we do the song. You know, we're we're up there. They know probably that I don't know. Just probably by the look on my face, they probably know I don't know. I mean, you know, <laughs> you can't hide everything. You can try. So we're lining up. This, we're lining up now, ready to go on the platform. This is from a, a lot of people on TV. Kenneth Copeland is going to be speaking. Okay. <laughs> And they're lining us up. 
and two of the girls are dressed exactly the same. Exactly the same. And I'm thinking, that's not good, because we're going in the camera. And I'm thinking, we should switch, because I'm dressed a little different. We're all in black and white. But they're exactly the same. I mean, the exact same outfit. That's not going to look good. So I raised my hand. <laughs> I just raised my hand, because I want to tell them. And they go, what? You need a crutch? I was like, no, ma'am, I don't. That's all I did. And they went, oh. <laughs> now, I could have got that attitude. Like, I can't believe she dissed me like that. Forget this. They don't, I'm not. <laughs> but I didn't. Instead, I was just like, no, ma'am. I did not take offense to that. I just went, this is the situation. They fixed the situation. Out we went, sang the songs I don't know. And grew leaps and bounds. I mean, I could feel the love muscle being stretched, if you know what I'm talking about. I could feel it. I could feel it. Yes, yeah. The living sacrifice wanted to run, Pastor said. Yes, many times. But see, if you don't run, you grow. You grow. You're transformed. Your mind is renewed. And you start thinking like Jesus thinks. What? Wow. Isn't that a beautiful thing? All because you're willing to give back something to him that he gave you in the first place. Because that's what this sacrifice is. Giving him something he gave me in the first place. And I'm still doing it today. And I'd like to say it gets easier and easier. Not so much. <laughs> Not so much. It gets easier in that you know this is what I do. So it's, it gets easy. But it's not to say the, the, uh, mm, the gift is calling to be given. And you're like, yeah, I was hoping you never called for that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. You all know what I'm talking about. I can see it on your face. You're like, yeah, I was hoping to keep that one under wraps. <laughs> but there is a continual. I heard pastor say it. He even quoted Romans, and I thought, there he goes, preaching my message again. But he didn't. <laughs> in prayer and prior to service, because we're all in the same flow. But it said about presenting our bodies, a living sacrifice. I mean... We're all, we're all doing it right now. Today, we're presenting. We brought our bodies. Some of us are singing. Some of us are preaching. Some of us are working the sound. Some of us are teaching the kids. Some of us are serving in hospitality. hospitality. But there's more. Because there were a lot of gifts listed that there's more. You have gifts in you that God wants you to bring when the body joins together for the equipping of the body. So when the body is outside... You see, that's what it's for. It's not just to grow you up. It's to equip you. It's to equip you. And, and how good of God to surround us with people that know Jesus. It's not like he, he throws you in a place and goes, okay, these people are going to hate you. Um, and, and it's going to be really hard for you. Uh, but I want you to grow up. No, instead, he creates the church, the body of Christ. He says, I'm bringing everyone together that believes in me. And every, every uh, body will have a purpose. And I'm talking now about the different churches, you know, the different uh, headings of churches, if I could say that. Because we're all one body. We're all one body. But there are different assignments for each part. So he calls you to the part where you're going to fit the best and oftentimes we don't feel like we fit the best because we bump elbows with somebody and sparks fly. Uh, yeah. Iron sharpens iron. And sparks fly. <laughs> but you're the better for it when that happens. Yeah. And instead, instead, many want to go, well, man, that really ticked me off and I'm not coming back. And they don't. But when you stay in it because you're presenting your body a living sacrifice, it's all about Jesus. It's not about us. It's all about Jesus. I'm going to read one more, one more verse before we close. 
I, I was talking, there is death involved with a sacrifice, and we know that. The, uh, Levitical, the book of Leviticus will teach you about the different offerings that are brought. And uh, I, I read a statement that it says, in the sacrifice there's death and, there's, and it always brings transformation. And I was like, I'm not getting that. In the case of the Le Levitical law, I get it in, in my understanding of bringing my body, presenting my body, I get the transformation in my soul. But the author I was reading after was using Romans to say about the sacrifice. We give, we're bringing something, and, and he said, with death, there's always transformation. So I'm looking at the offerings in Leviticus because that's how the Jewish people were trained to bring offering. And again, they're bringing the sacrifice to get closer to God. They're not getting, they're not bringing the sacrifice to appease God. And that's important to remember because that's a, that's a corrupted view of sacrifice. I got to bring this so he doesn't fry me, so to speak. But even their hearts were, I'm bringing this because I love him. And so with death, there's transformation. And so here's where the transformation is. When an animal was brought, it was burned. And it turned into a sweet-smelling aroma. That's where the transformation was. God couldn't partake in the meal with them. The priest partook in the meal. But God doesn't need a meal. He, he partook in their offering by the aroma the heart of it. So God partakes in our offering from the heart of it. Now I'm going to read one, one more scripture. I told you I would. And it's Hebrews chapter 10. And again, um, you know, oh, don't hold me to one scripture. I might read one more. <laughs> I got a minute or two. Hebrews 10, starting with verse 19 all the way up to verse 25. Hebrews 10, 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. See, that's what this is all about. The blood of Jesus has been shed for us, making an access for us into heaven. Prior to that, that's my alarm telling me we're done. I'm done. <laughs> I know. So the blood of Jesus was shed so that we again would have access to God's throne. That's, that's what it was all about in the first place. So this verse, having therefore brethren, boldness to enter in the holies by the blood of Jesus. We can pro approach God because of the blood. Verse 20, by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. Oh, you need some help? Well, with the 30,000 pockets you got, yes, I do. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Start over. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter in the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God. So Jesus is the high priest, and he's the sacrifice, and he brought the blood. Okay? So he's the high priest, and verse 22 says, let us draw near. That word in sacrifice means draw near. Present your body as a living sacrifice. It means draw near. That's what sacrifice really means in Hebrew. It's a drawing near. We're bringing a gift because we want to get closer. Draw near. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. There it is. Let us consider one another 
to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So see, us drawing near is bringing the sacrifice. Let us present our bodies a living sacrifice. Let us draw near. Let us draw near with a true heart, full, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Everything ha the, the path has been made clear for us. It's kind of, like what, kind of like what Don said, clean sweep. Yeah, clean sweep. There's no, there are no hindrances for us to approach God. There are no hindrances for us to do what he's asked us to do. None. He, clean sweep. He's removed all hindrances. The blood of Jesus. Even the ones that, that we struggle with internally. Our own self-thoughts. Well, you just don't know what I've done. Uh, no. You're, you've been washed. Clear conscience. Yeah, but you, you don't know what I said to my wife last night. Uh, it, it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, your, your conscience is clear because of the blood of Jesus. Well, you don't know the thoughts I've been having. Uh, well, your conscience is clear because of the blood of Jesus. It says your heart has been sprinkled by the blood of Jesus. And it says your body's been washed with pure water. So we're good to go. <laughs> we're good to go. Clean slate. Clean sweep. No hindrance. Let us draw near. Let us hold fast. Let us consider. Let us not forsake the assembling. Yeah. Because we love him. Yes. We love him. So we present our bodies a living sacrifice. And the result is transformation. How cool is that? Wow. Uh, I'm going to close, but... Uh, there are many verses you, you look up sweet smell, sweet aroma, fragrance. Paul talks about that, that our lives become a sweet smell to God. That's that sacrifice exchange. When we serve, it's a sweet smell to God. He's blessed by it. Because remember, he says, when you've done it in the least of these, you've done it unto me. So he considers anything we do that we're doing it to him. And uh, the other day, I was just meditating sitting in the chair, and I was just talking to the Lord about a few things, and all of a sudden, up comes this, I hear this, did you not know I had to be about my father's business? And I was like, and it was, I wasn't really even thinking I was meditating on anything like that. It just came up. Did you not know I had to be about my father's business? And I, he got my attention, and he said, check that out. Check that out. So I went and I looked at it, and the word business was added by the translators. Ah. So what Jesus was really saying was, didn't you know I had to be consumed with my father? Didn't you know I had to be all about my father? That's what he was saying. Why were you looking for me? Didn't you know I had to be all about my father? Uh, and I, I hear that, uh, I understood that because I hear I'm all about that. I think Bonnie says that sometimes when there's something he's really on fire about. I'm all about that. Um, and I know what he's, when he's saying that, I know what he means. Yep. I'm all in, man. I'm all in. So when the Lord was talking to me about that, I'm like, oh, I get that. Jesus is like, I'm all in. I'm all in. I'm all about that. And that's what he said. Didn't you know I'm all about my father? I'm all about my father. And that's something we can all say. Didn't you know we're all about our father? We're all about our father. <sighs> yeah. We're all about him. We're all about our father. That's why we can present ourselves. Because we're all about our father. We're all about him. Woo! Yeah. Glory. Glory to God. Wow.
Wow. Gentlemen, you can go ahead and take the keys. You know, I, I, that, 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 and that, that example that he gave me about the diamond, I could see it really touched so many of you. Um, and that, that was right from God saying, you need to share that. Because that's what it's about. It's like, you know, you probably have all seen different images of a diamond in the rough. But God considers every single thing he's given all of us a precious gift. Valuable, precious gift. And, and, I, and I'm thinking as I, as I say this, it's coming up in me about, you know, let not the foot say I have no need of the eye. Or the eye say I have no need of the foot. You know, where, where would we be if we didn't have all the parts of our body? When we don't have all the parts of our body that we're deficient and we have to, we have to make up for it in a way. Like if my one leg wasn't here, my right leg would be absorbing all the weight of my body and it would have to do double the work of my body. So... Each thing that he's given all of us, and, and he's given us all gifts. And they're not just so we can just hold on to them and go, oh, look at this beautiful gift. You know, or even wear it and display it. Like the necklace that my husband gave me, that was a be it was a beautiful diamond. And I loved wearing it. But I loved even more seeing it on his hand in that setting. And it, was, and it really was because it was a demonstration of my love to him. And, and so when I present what God has given to me, <laughs> when I present what God has given to me, it's the same thing. So each one of us have these gifts to present to God. And he's chosen the church arena for you to do it. So that you can get proficient and take it outside. You're jumping. I got to. There's a part of the.